Okay, so we look on our interface windows. We maybe not gone very close to the properties and because um, Targen provide very powerful and very flexible tools to control those properties. So most of them will kind of you work when you start doing the projects. So before we go into some of those properties, let's do one small project just overall familiarize so we'll create our first render it won't be very complex but we'll try to go over some of these tabs so we can access some properties and see how it's work let's go ahead we'll create brand new set so you notice right here we have our terrain and what i want to do in this terrain first i want to add a little bit more of the sky so to do this we'll just hold down alt button and can reposition slightly Remember, at this point, if I click render, I want to render this scenery. So I want just copy to my current camera setting. So now I'm kind of lock or take a snapshot of position and set my cameras. So when I render, my render will be provide just this view. Okay, to test this, let's go ahead and click on open render view. And I'll just as a default values. So I'll just click render you'll notice it is created dots. So it's have it back at sampling and it's just some technical terminology going over this, but overall you can notice it's sampling the colors around this area. You can reduce if you want quality sampling areas. It will take longer to render, but it will be a little bit more accurate on the colors and atmospheres. So right here's our settings. It's have a default shattering and this is very on Tergen 3 um, default settings. Notice right here, we have our shaders. When we're creating, when we was rendering, you notice we have it pause, stop, or cancel. So we can do this while we render, we cancel our animations. The one biggest plus where I like it, and let me do this again. So I'm going to render, render again. I can move this again, and I can continue working on all my nodes, exciting all properties, everything, while it's still rendering. This is a big kind of plus for me because it doesn't stop me from working till I'm maybe processing my preview render till it's going. Again, right here, notice we have a pause and stop so we can pause or resume our render. We can stop and cancel. The next button in render menu, we have a zoom to the render so we can go to specific segment if it's sometimes size. Okay, we also can look on a different type of the channels when we render okay and of course we can have it render this or current project when we set so right here are our preview right um in our terrain and right here if you notice we have the tabs the tabs is set is easy way to kind of create workflow so if you have any object edit you can do it but we'll start with the terrain as usual. This is our basic. And we have a different type of terrain we can create. We have a high field, we have a fractal, and we also have some displacement shaders that we can add later. So let's talk very fast till we're creating projects between high field and a fractal. High field, it's mostly used as an image, which is grayscale. The white is highest, black is lowest point and you can apply predefined shape to your high field. And a fractal, it's using mathematical functions to randomize in creating. Theoretically, you don't have its scale limits for the fractal, so it will generate as closer camera or as far away, will reduce. And you do have a limitation on high field based on a pixels resolution. Two differences, fractal, it's a little bit less, you can control it, how it's a look on the shape. You can define general, but not really work on some small details. And it's take a little bit longer to render due to the mathematical calculations. High field, you have limitations on a scale, but it's a little bit more controllable and it's render faster. So for this one, what we want to do, we're going and create um, power fractal. So right here, we have two terrains. You'll notice we have one and two. So let's do actually, you know what, let's go from beginning. Let's go delete all of them. Okay, so right now we have a simple flat field. We go to terrain and we'll click on 
power fractal. So we created our first fractal. Notice right here in preview, we can see with our camera located. So we can select and we can kind of preview a little bit, readjust position of this camera inside, not that much. Again, if you want more details, you can open uh, top view and adjust this way. As well, right here, we have some simple properties for our fractal terrain. You notice we have an overall scale, lead in a scale, smaller scale, and noise. So the overall feature, it's a scale of the size. Lead in scale, it's how much when you start merging with other terrains, how much they will merge together. Smaller scale, it is teeny tiny details they currently see. It. The smaller is scale, the more details, but you also will increase some noise it will generating because you cannot recognize some small pixels and it's take a little bit longer. So for the huge ones, you maybe even want to release, but default settings will work just fine. We also have a color, displacement, tweak nodes, warping, and animation tabs. Okay, of all of this, we will look in more exploring Charging 3 set of tutorials where we're going a little bit more in depth. Right now, again, in discovering, it's more kind of overview and help you kickstart fast working with Terrigen as well. So right here, we have our terrain. Next step, you notice we have our shaders or creating materials based on this. So let's go ahead and open this. So right now, this all look great. We go click on a base color. Okay. And right here, we have a color displaying. So let's go ahead and switch our base color. Okay, we have it lower and high color to something a little bit more, maybe brownish um, kind of color. So let's go ahead, select. And by the way, right here, when we have a color tab, you notice we have a different type of the color selection you can use. You can use it RGB type slider, HEC or grayscale. This is if you prefer. Um, you also can have a color wheel you can go over. Some presets or SMYK or RGB type. So you can go directly and preview. You can also have a picker on this. You have a combination or a mixer of the colors. And of course, you have it your standard if you like it. Preview where you have a basic color or just going around. So this is all depend on uh, which way you prefer. For this tutorial, I'll just use color wheel and some hues on this. So let's go ahead, click OK. That is create some um, overall brown layer. And notice where it's located. So when we add, it will add one above or one. So let's go ahead. Now I want to add to this basic color which we can also can modify and add. I want to add some grass, maybe in flat areas. For this, we'll go to add layer. And right here, we'll just select for now surface layer. Surface layer, you notice it's below, but it's overrided. It's overlay all over places. Notice also when you create some surface layer or other things, one thing I want to point right now, you have right here this bright kind of pinkish color. This is a highlighter or desk color. When you enable, you can overlay. This is easiest way to preview where it's located. For example, if I'm placing right here and I can go to altitude constraints, okay, and enable limited maximum altitude. Notice when I start moving, my highlighter just start a little bit changing. So let me bring kind of maybe around this area right here you can see where I put it so my highlighter is showing for me where it's located why it's in a um, powerful because what if my color just a little bit offset of the brown because sometimes when I create set uh, sand maybe I want to create wet which little bit darker it's hard to see in a preview with this enable test color or highlighters I can easily see the distribution of the my um, material so let's actually bring just slightly a little bit up. Okay. And next, what I want to do, I want kind of more blend in. Right now, just cover. Um, I want to go to 
slope constraint. Let's enable limited slope. And we can also work on the kind of slope constraints. So in this case, you can see if I go closer, some of these slopes when I just, but what if I want maybe on don't display on this, you remember, we have it also ability to go inside, right click, copy slope angle. So you can preview or you can move like right here slope is 2362 notes right there, this slope and this one is 7.8. So maximum it will go if I want display maybe on this angle, which is 25 degrees, all what I need to do is just go up and maybe set about 26. So right now you notice on the slope on 26 degrees, it will be start covering. So we set our cover on a slope. The next we also have the fastness. Fastness zone, it is right now very sharp cutting off. And that were very good when you maybe decide to create uh, snow layers or other things in some cases, but I want to increase this a little bit more. So it's will, fastness will go both way. It will go increase a little bit higher and also will decrease. So you can notice right here. Oh, maybe set a little bit too much. There you go. Again, with the highlighters, I can preview a little bit easier. Okay, let's go to disable color. And next, let's go to um, our color, apply color. And I'm going to switch something more kind of older grass type. Okay, let's click OK. We can also apply some fractal to these colors if we need it to combine with different offset. But right now, we'll just leave it like this color. Okay, the next also what I want to do right here, you can preview from top, going and coverage a backup and uh, just take this coverage and reduce. This is overall, think about this as an alpha blending. So it's a, if we're going all the way down, it will be kind of transparency and we increasing alpha transparency down. Um, again, one, it will be no color going through as an alpha transparency. And of course, if we're going down, the some color will start bleeding through. This is a way it's help kind of blending these colors together um, well this way. As well, let's go to the fractal breakdown right here and take the value and maybe increase slightly. Actually, you know what? Let's go take lower. So we'll kind of have a nicer cover. Okay, at this point, if you're interested, let's go ahead and render. Okay, so this is our preview render. You can see we have it already kind of nicely apply grass, avoiding some areas and a little bit more greenish in the area right here. We can add a little bit more complex. So let's continue in the next part of this tutorial to add a little bit more shaders and colors to this.